Opinions in Southeast Asia. Hi, this is Arlene. Hi, this is Gauri. Hello, this is Grace. And of course, you are with us at our Durian ASEAN, the, the Durian Kit of Discovery <laughs> and Sherry. That's right. So today we have a very, very special guest. It's so special that we are so nervous actually. <laughs> 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 Yeah, in case you can't tell, we're just making <laughs> the statement. So, he is, of course, the Malaysia's uh, Youth and Sports Minister, and we're very uh, honoured to have him in here today in our studio. And uh, YB21, Kairi Jamaluddin. Let's say good morning to him. Good morning, thank you very Hello. much. Uh, thank you so thank much you, for Gary, coming in, Arlene joining us. Grace, thank you very much for inviting me onto the show. You're welcome. <laughs> So, uh, before we start uh, our discussion about today's topic, which is, does ASEAN integration has a spot for the younger generation, mm -hmm. especially young Southeast Asian? A bit of introduction about uh, yourself and your um, concern about Southeast Asia. Uh, I'm, as uh, Gauri mentioned just now, the Minister of Youth and Sports uh, for Malaysia. And uh, because this year, Malaysia assumes the, or has assumed the chair of ASEAN, um, I think it is incumbent upon not just the government, but for everyone in Malaysia to get behind um, our role as chair of ASEAN this year, uh, especially in terms of making ASEAN a people-centric uh, region. And for the um, ASEAN project, uh, I'd like to call it that, the ASEAN dream, to be driven by people, especially young people. Um, ASEAN for too many years has been uh, too dependent on uh, governments, uh, on diplomacy, on summits, uh, and on the trade and investment. It's all about the higher level. It's it's about the higher level, but it does make a difference at the at the um, at the working level as well. Because when you talk about business, you're creating jobs um, on the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, but that sense of belonging, that sense of identity uh, of being part of ASEAN, I think needs to take root amongst uh, the people. Mm -hmm. So, before that. I'm curious why ASEAN matters so much to the younger generation because I mean we've been asking a lot of the young people in Malaysia specifically they either have no clue what is ASEAN or they have very I guess surface idea how ASEAN would work for them. Yeah it's actually quite alarming not just in Malaysia but all, all over ASEAN how little uh, young people actually know about ASEAN. Uh, they know ASEAN, uh, they know that we are part of ASEAN but they don't know much beyond that. Um, I think it's very important that young people understand more about ASEAN because I was asked recently, um, sum up ASEAN uh, in one word uh, for the region. What I would say ASEAN? durian. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a great symbolism for, for ASEAN. Uh, strong and prickly on the outside, but, you know, tasty <laughs> on the inside. Um, but um, the, uh, the word that I used was survival. Mm -hmm. um, for us to survive in an incre increasingly competitive uh, world, uh, not just uh, in terms of economics but also geopolitics, we need to be together. And ASEAN together is stronger. You're a market and a single production base of more than 600 million people. Uh, you punch above your weight when you're together. And I really think that the future survival of this region um, depends on us being more integrated as ASEAN. This is something that young people do not see immediately. Because but it, it's, it's such a heavy word, you know, survival for young people who care only probably, you know, their latest relationship and college life. And then oh. the smartphone. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, they, they, they have to find money to pay for that smartphone. Mm -hmm. They have to find money to, you know, pay for that relationship as well, depending <laughs> on how high maintenance <laughs> their boyfriend or girlfriend yeah, uh, sure. is. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, you know, when you talk about money, you have to talk about jobs. When you talk about jobs, you have to talk about a growing economy. Mm -hmm. And you cannot have this uh, if you don't integrate fast and if you don't uh, leverage off ASEAN as a single market. Uh, and I'm saying that um, all of our economies within ASEAN have done relatively well up to now. But really going beyond that and creating the jobs of the future and that single marketplace where there's a free flow of goods, services, uh, skilled labor, capital, you need ASEAN to work. Mm. Uh, I want to ask about uh, the skilled labor uh, mm. in terms of mobility among yeah. the youth because 
Uh, we know uh, even in Malaysia, we have a huge problem with unemployment in the country, and I'm sure it's the same with a lot of other countries as well. Yeah. So how can they actually use the AEC to overcome that problem? Or are there certain sectors that they can look yeah, at? Yeah, that's a fantastic question, uh, Gauri, because th this is really uh, about, um, you know, what does it really mean? Uh, what does the AEC, the ASEAN Economic Community, mean to me as a person? Right. Um, yes, in theory, the ASEAN economic community will see a free flow of skilled labor, which means if you're a professional, if you're a people, uh, if you're a worker within certain um, uh, industries, mm -hmm. you can theoretically move to another ASEAN yeah. country uh, without there being a barrier, uh, without there being um, uh, onerous uh, permit requirements. These are things that are being resolved at this very moment. It's not just about the commitment at the political level, but you also have to ensure that these sectors really open up for workers from around ASEAN to move around. So if you're a banker in Malaysia or engineer in Malaysia and you want to move, for instance, to Indonesia or to uh, Singapore, uh, you should be able to do so quite right. freely. But that is not just the government's agreeing to it, it's also the board of engineers of both countries, for instance, having a reciprocal arrangement so that you can practice uh, wherever within ASEAN. So these are the the so-called uh, non-tariff barriers that uh, that we need to eliminate if we are to start seeing greater flow, not just of trade and investment, but also of uh, labor. Mm -hmm. But here we are talking about youth. So before we talk about um, as an in economic uh, community and all those big words that might you know be so heavy on youth. But then when, when we talk about youth, it, education is very important. So how do we actually penetrate youth via education? Because after they finish high school and the university, all they think about is how they are going to survive in Malaysia. But right now, the question is they, the youth, they need to be able to think in an ASEAN level as in like, mm -hmm. I, I will get a job, but then how do I get uh, opportunities outside of Malaysia? Or how, do I benefit the uh, how do I benefit the country, not only Malaysia, but the Southeast Asia? Yeah, mm -hmm. Th that's why, um, for instance, Malaysia has started an ASEAN internship program where we, uh, we find young people who are still at university uh, and place them out mm -hmm. in our companies, Malaysian companies, both uh, government-linked companies and, as well as um, non-government linked companies who have uh, offices around ASEAN so that they can get that uh, perspective of working abroad mm -hmm. as well. And we have some of the best um, companies in terms of the best ASEAN companies from right. Malaysia. If you talk about an ASEAN bank, I think CIMB is clearly um, uh, streets ahead of it with an ASEAN identity. If you talk about ASEAN airline, mm -hmm. Air Asia okay. clearly is ahead in terms of the ASEAN identity. So getting young Malaysians out there mm -hmm. through the internship program, just an ex as an example, mm -hmm. um, is a great way of showing how an integrated market can create job opportunities for them. It's not going to be seamless, like I said earlier. It's, you know, we're all talking about free flow, right. but uh, there are still a lot of barriers. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, these, are, these are steps that are being taken, like the internship program, uh, where we create those opportunities, not just here, but across ASEAN as well. Do you think there is a balance between science and arts? Because, uh, of course, they tend to favor more science graduates. Uh, <laughs> and uh, of course, for me, I'm from a performing arts background as well. So I want to know that when it comes to ASEAN integration, uh, how much uh, allocation or, or do people from the arts or even like sports and all have, uh, how can they leverage? Well, I think arts is a perfect example of an of a open um, and free-flowing uh, sector. I know a lot of Malaysians, uh, Malaysian performance uh, artists who perform in Singapore, in Indonesia, uh, and vice versa. So I mean, this is this is a perfect sector where uh, there really aren't that many barriers uh, already. You know, so. Um, so you don't think it's a disadvantage? No, not not at all. And I think the arts is an important uh, unifying mm -hmm. sector for ASEAN. Uh, there are many things that distinguish the ASEAN countries, uh, unique to uh, ASEAN countries, but I think we share um, a lot in common in terms of, uh, of uh, our culture mm -hmm. and in terms of what we can showcase. So I think culture is definitely something that, uh, that can be um, a showcase of uh, how we can move around and, and perform in each, uh, each other's countries. Mm -hmm. Interesting. But we know one area that I think uh, I'm personally interested in is politics. Young people, young Southeast Asian uh, 
talking about right. politics regionally and with politics of course you have uh, issues about human rights issues about um, uh, political participation among young people and of course uh, freedom of expression and all that these are very I would say um, issues that are dif uh, different from country to country in terms of the acceptance of the governments in Southeast Asia. So for you, you know, you set up this ASEAN Youth Assembly. Uh, is this something, one of the areas that you want to expand more in terms of amplifying youth voices to address issues that concern them in their own uh, countries? Yes, because uh, the, uh, the idea of having the ASEAN Youth uh, Assembly actually came from our youth parliament. Um, they wanted to have um, a similar setup like the Malaysian Youth Parliament at the ASEAN level where young ASEAN leaders would regularly come together um, in what would be known as the ASEAN Youth Assembly to uh, discuss uh, common issues uh, and also to make um, young ASEAN voices heard on an uh, institutionalized uh, platform. Um, and I think it's a, it's a wonderful idea to try and pursue I've been trying to first of all convince, um, first of all, uh, the Prime Minister and then uh, subsequently try and get the other ASEAN governments to agree to set up a ASEAN Permanent Youth Secretariat, uh, hopefully here in Malaysia, which can run programs and which can be the uh, organisational host for the ASEAN Youth Assembly. Mm -hmm. It's very important because I think, you know, different ASEAN countries have different political systems. Mm -hmm. Uh, you have um, you have uh, uh, democracies. You have uh, <coughs> monarchies, um, <laughs> and yeah, you have other forms of government uh, as well uh, within ASEAN. Uh, and we have to, uh, of course, respect each other's uh, political systems. But at the same time, this is the point that I've been making: is that um, whatever political system you come from, whether it's a democracy. Uh, whether it is a monarchy or whether it is um, other forms of governments, um, you cannot ignore the voice of the people. Right. And you must uh, adhere to some uh, basic standards of good governance, basic standards and commitments towards human rights and civil liberties and the right to development. Uh, and I think that th these are things that young people should speak about. Mm -hmm. um, yes, uh, this may be... Uh, a different way of approaching something because in ASEAN it's traditionally been the ASEAN way mm -hmm. which is not to talk about uh, sensitive issues which has really just been about consensus and it's worked so far and I no matter what people say about the ASEAN way I think it's very very effective but I think today uh, that ASEAN way should be combined with uh, the willingness to listen to voices uh, from the ground young voices and that's been happening. That's why in conjunction with the ASEAN Summit, there's the ASEAN People's Forum that takes place, uh, which also ASEAN recognizes, which was supported by ASEAN host governments. So this is an indication to say that, look, yeah, we, we do have different forms of government within ASEAN, but we all understand that power really is in the people's hands. Mm -hmm. We will take one short break. When we return, we will discuss more with YB Tuan Kairi Jamaluddin. The voice of Sherry. Durian Heat, bringing big ideas and critical opinions in Southeast Asia. Hi, this is Arlene. Hi, this is Gauri. Welcome back, this is Grace. And of course, you are with us again on our Durian Heat, where we discuss critical issue in Southeast Asia. And of course, today we have again our YB Tuan Kari Jamaluddin, our Minister of Youth and Sports from Malaysia. So, uh, to continue our discussion today, <laughs> we discussed a lot about ASEAN, about you know, mm -hmm. ASEAN community and all that. But I guess one specific area that I'm curious to know about, which is like your ministry. Mm -hmm. um, how much your ministry have done in terms of trying to amplify uh, the awareness of ASEAN towards Malaysian youth? We're, we're trying uh, to... Because it seems um, like a lot of young people no, in Malaysia still, <laughs> if you ask on the street, like, I don't you're know. Absolutely right. You're absolutely <laughs> right. So, so we blame you yeah. for that. Yeah. Right? No, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's a collective failure on, mm -hmm. uh, on the parts of all ASEAN governments right, that, right. Um, you know, ASEAN people within ASEAN still don't really know much about ASEAN. They probably know more about Backstreet Boys. Uh, that's really resign. unfortunate, yeah. yeah. Um, no, we've been supporting the, the committee of uh, ASEAN Youth Corporation, CAYC, which is based in uh, our International uh, Youth Centre uh, in uh, Chiras, under my ministry. 
since the 1970s who provide an annual grant for them and they run programs. Obviously, it's not enough. I mean, there is a committee that um, that gets uh, all the ASEAN youth uh, organizations together and runs programs. Uh, perhaps we need to relook at this. It's not. Uh, it's not uh, perhaps being funded enough. It's not uh, taking an approach that is inclusive enough. Um, but uh, this year is going to be very important, as I said earlier, because uh, Malaysia chairs ASEAN this year. We're going to have an ASEAN leaders, young leaders summit in November. Uh, so hopefully, in the lead up to that, um, we'll have a lot of programs where we get young people more aware about ASEAN. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, there are a lot of other things that we're doing on the sidelines. For instance, recently I, we did an international conference with ASEAN focus on young uh, social entrepreneurs. Uh, we're doing an ASEAN run uh, and an ASEAN village uh, in a couple of months' time. So these are a lot of programs that we've lined up so that we try and get more young people to participate. But I don't know. We really have to think out of the box because yeah. these things are all, you know, I mean, it's, it's well and good doing all these things, these forums, these summits and all that. But it still doesn't penetrate the, the consciousness of the public. Yeah. So it's the, it's the cool effect, I guess. It's the cool effect. Yeah. So um, so that's why uh, one of my um, one of the things that I've been working on is uh, this joint bid for the football, the soccer World Cup, the FIFA World Cup 2034 ASEAN bid. Uh, because I believe that uh, it's through sports and arts that you mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, Gauri, that we can really get uh, people excited. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when the European community uh, started, they had this Eurovision Song Contest, which, you know, basically... Uh, right. yeah, the, I love that. Uh, exactly. <laughs> Even I'm not from Europe. Exactly. And, and that, that was, I mean, as, as corny as it was, mm -hmm. that really excited people about being part of Europe, the countries uh, competing against each other through their bands and the singers. We need something like that. The ASEAN World Cup is just one one example that mm -hmm. I'm trying to push right now, which will get people together and feel, wow, you know, we're gonna host a World Cup, or we have, you know, bidding to host a World Cup. Mm -hmm. Especially when football is probably the biggest passion among uh, people in Southeast Asia. Yeah. But yep. yet, uh, I mean, none of Southeast Asian countries well, 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 are able to penetrate yeah, the World Cup. Well, not very really good, but you know, I mean, at least if we host the World Cup, then there's a chance mm -hmm. of one of us getting through. I think we just touch on the very important part of to make something, create something that young people can relate themselves to. And the football could be one of them, music could be one of them, any forms of entertainment, yeah. as long as that sort of shape their hearts, you know, to motivate them, they will they will participate in any kinds of activities activities regards ASEAN. Yeah. So we I mean not just the World Cup, but there there are other ideas and other things that you can do to try and make ASEAN more meaningful to people on the streets. Mm -hmm. Um, C Games, Southeast Asia Games uh, that we run every two years. Singapore's the host this year, 2017 Malaysia. Um, I propose the idea that we rename it from Sea Games to ASEAN Game. Again, you know, branding for ASEAN. And also the ASEAN um, identity. ASEAN identity. And then now you have ASEAN lanes at airports. So, you know, when you arrive somewhere, you just mm -hmm. go through an ASEAN lane if mm -hmm. you have a passport from ASEAN country. We've been talking about having a single time zone for ASEAN so that, you know, people feel that, okay, we're part of a single time zone. Um, so these small things, well, not so small, but these things which people say are, you know, that's just superficial, they're really important. Um, to actually uh, have a uh, impact on ordinary people. Because as I said earlier, these trade agreements and stuff like that just fly over people's heads. Yep. Uh, but you know, when you have one time zone, when you have ASEAN Lane, when you have ASEAN World Cup and all that kind of stuff, that means something to people. They understand that immediately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So tell us more about uh, the ASEAN Post 2015. Uh, why, how can young people, I guess, uh, really participate in it and try to contribute more in terms of how the vision or the future of ASEAN would look like? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, um, by having, you know, like, like you guys, you have Durian ASEAN and you, you have a lot of ASEAN content on your, uh, on your station. I think this is a great idea. And I think young people should, should start thinking more within the region, mm -hmm. have more collaboration. Uh, I'm quite happy at the Ministry of Youth and Sports to support, uh, fund and give grants to projects which are ASEAN-centric. Mm -hmm. I'm a firm believer in ASEAN. I'd like to see more young people travel between ASEAN, have programs uh, between ASEAN countries. I think that, um, that's one of the areas that young people in Malaysia especially would love to do, you know, travelling uh, to Southeast Asian countries. Probably it's because of its cheap and it's beautiful yes, travelling around here. Sure. And that's why we one of the other ideas that that um, we had, which um, which is not just an idea now, which we are actually uh, starting to implement, is uh, the idea of having volunteers go 
uh, around uh, the world, especially within ASEAN. So we, we started this thing called MyCorp, uh, M-Y-C-O-R-P-S. It's not pronounced MyCorps, it's <laughs> MyCorps. Uh, um, MyCorps is uh, basically like the US Peace Corps where we send um, young Malaysians overseas uh, and there'll be an ASEAN uh, flavor to this uh, for a minimum of one year uh, to marginalized communities and uh, they'll be doing all sorts of uh, community related work, uh, volunteer work uh, in health, education, community organizing, uh, providing basic amenities. Um, so that's, that's something that we'll see Malaysians being sent out to the world, especially to ASEAN. Uh, and that I think will build a lot of solidarity. Mm. But if there's like a few, uh, if, if there's a list of things that Malaysian youth can do at least in terms of trying to connect themselves to uh, to ASEAN or create that ASEAN identity, what can we do? Because I mean, it's I mean nowadays, for example, like how how are you able to make friends with people from Laos? Yeah, well, I mean, I mean you know, they, they pro culturally, <coughs> politically, totally different. Twenty years ago, people <laughs> made friends uh, by being pen pals. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, they used to <laughs> write random letters to somebody that they've never met, and uh, you know, three thousand five hundred miles away, or wherever it is. Um, and and now it's it's much easier. Mm -hmm. You have social media to do it. Now I think what um, you know, coming back to great point that Gary made earlier. I think you should really find projects like in the arts and work on it together. Mm -hmm. And you have a very, very supportive government here in Malaysia that believes in the ASEAN project. And my ministry, I'm, I'm a firm believer in ASEAN. Uh, and I really like to fund uh, uh, young people doing ASEAN stuff. You know, it's all about getting like-minded people together, a collective of artists, a collective of performers, a collective of young people interested in any um, number of things. Uh, you know, to do something and put on something together. Yeah, interesting. So that goes back to, you know, young people should actually take more control in terms of trying to seek that ASEAN identity rather than the other way. You're right, Alia. I mean, you know, I, 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 as much as, you know, all the stuff that I've mentioned earlier about uh, the ASEAN World Cup, about the ASEAN Youth Assembly, about MyCore, these are all programs and activities that mm -hmm. we're pushing for, the ASEAN Youth Leader Summit. But ultimately, the ones that will really, really have traction are the ones that are initiated by young people themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, we, the government, we will initiate our programs, but I think the ones that will have most impact and meaning for young people are ideas that come from young people. For the youth, from the youth, that's our philosophy at the ministry, and we hope to uh, practice that at, at an ASEAN level as well. Mm -hmm. So talking about initiation, and something just hit my mind, which is the youth entrepreneurship. So a lot of uh, SMEs and or even startups are booming up in Malaysia and throughout the Southeast Asia. What is your perspectives on the youth entrepreneurship in ASEAN level? Well, I think there's a great opportunity because we're pushing ASEAN as a single production base. That means it doesn't matter where you are in ASEAN, mm -hmm. you can set up your factory wherever and uh, you know it'll be easy and seamless for you, at least in theory, mm -hmm. uh, to do business within ASEAN. And I think that it's important that uh, young business people get together. There are chambers of commerce for young entrepreneurs in each ASEAN countries. I know there are strong linkages between Malaysia, Indonesia, uh, Malaysia and Singapore. Um, and I think uh, more can be leveraged from that. But I, it really starts from a perspective that you see ASEAN as a single production right. base. You don't see yourself as working out of Singapore or out of Malaysia, uh, but you see yourself working out of the region. And if you can uh, get the competitive advantage of the region uh, into your perspective, mm -hmm. I think that's, uh, that's when ASEAN works and succeeds. And it's not about just working in the country, like you were saying. It's more about reaching out to that whole 600 million uh, yeah, population. Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, <coughs> if you are marketing a product, for instance, if you have an application, if you are, you know, a uh, software uh, engineer and you want to create an app, and, you know, you, you, you shouldn't just be thinking about creating an app for Malaysia. You should be thinking of creating an app for, for ASEAN or even the world, that matter. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think you should uh, immediately start thinking in your mind, if I'm a young entrepreneur, I've got a market of 630 million right. people, not a market of 30 million people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what about uh, marginalised youth? I mean, it's, it's nice on paper and also nice uh, to reach out to privileged youth, youth that, have, that 
that are able to move from one country to another country or set up companies or whatever. But what about youth that are, for example, uh, orang asli kids or kids uh, or youth that are unable to move forward even in their own country uh, or are still thinking about the bread and butter of their own family? So how can you connect us into them? Well, again, by saying that, uh, you know, th this is the survival of uh, the greater region mm -hmm. and for them to have better economic opportunities, education opportunities, their own countries have got to have vibrant economies mm -hmm. and those economies can only take uh, really flourish within a vibrant region of ASEAN. So for many people, I mean, Aline, you're, you're absolutely right. I, you know, for many people, it's still going to be a concept that is, you know, twice, thrice removed. It's not immediately there in front of them. Um, I don't think that every single person within the ASEAN community will have an appreciation of ASEAN mm -hmm. or will understand how it impacts their lives. Uh, but to me, as a policymaker, I understand that we need to grow the Malaysian economy. So to put it very simply, um, to give jobs and mm -hmm. opportunities to everyone in Malaysia, including marginalised youths uh, in all communities, we need a strong and growing economy. We can only do that uh, by having a strong and growing ASEAN. That's why ASEAN is important to me, because mm -hmm. it makes Malaysia stronger and it gives opportunities for our people. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk about our neighbouring countries, uh, neighbouring to Southeast Asia. Um, how do youth from Southeast Asia can relate themselves to, uh, I guess, the larger context, uh, either geopolitical uh, struggle between ASEAN and bigger countries like China and um, India and other neighbouring countries and or also like I guess uh, in terms of youth uh, uh, youth from Southeast Asia how do they relate to youth from other neighbouring countries the, uh, either in terms of um, connectivity or in terms of trying to understand the larger world because I guess in this era I mean as much as we're going to talk about the region of Southeast Asia at the end of the day you know like you say survival uh, at the end of the day we are still very much um, I guess lack of understanding in terms of how do we relate ourselves as young people in this larger I guess um, Asia Pacific region well, you know, again, it's it's connecting the big picture with uh, with uh, young people's ordinary uh, daily lives. Mm -hmm. um, geopolitical rivalry uh, in the Asia Pacific region uh, is not going to impact your ordinary uh, kid mm -hmm. in ASEAN. Uh, they're not going to see it, and they're not going to be able to understand it uh, in any um, uh, meaningful way. Uh, unless, of course, they have an interest in it and they read up on it. So um, it's something that, again, will be removed from their daily lives. Uh, but at the same time, I think we have to appreciate the fact that uh, ASEAN, uh, as an institution, has opened up um, dialogue for many, many years with its dialogue partners from China, Japan, uh, Korea, mm -hmm. uh, Australia, India, uh, all the way up to Russia, the United States. So there is an appreciation within ASEAN that we exist within this greater Asia-Pacific region. Mm -hmm. There are uh, economic opportunities around the Asia-Pacific region and there are also geopolitical But do, do you uh, have a similar issues. platform? platform uh, do you have a similar platform yes. for young people? Yes. Uh, I was just about to get there. We're, um, in, just before the East Asia Summit at the end of this year in KL, in November, we'll have our Young Leaders Summit. And it's not just the young leaders from ASEAN, we're also inviting the young leaders from the dialogue partners, mm -hmm. uh, especially uh, of great interest will be from Northeast Asia, so that young leaders will have an understanding of putting ASEAN within the context of the, of the bigger Asia-Pacific region. Mm -hmm. With that, yes, thank you very much. This is Arlene. This is Gauri. And this is Grace. Thank you. Thank you. The